father passed away this week. Mm-hmm. So they went to the funeral uh, on Saturday and we are coming back uh, tonight, I guess, but uh, they didn't be there with the family. So uh, pray for uh, an opportunity to be a witness. Uh, her parents have heard the gospel many times and they know that they're Christians. And they've been in church mm-hmm. there in Seki several times, but uh, pray that the Lord would continue to work in their hearts. And uh, pray for the family and uh, that they will be able to be a testimony witness and encouragement for them. And pray for um, the Leonis as they travel back today. So we keep them safe. Uh, pray for my wife. She's uh, She had her cast taken off and then put a new one put on. Uh, so she has to have a cast on for four weeks. And the doctor said uh, that two weeks and then we cut it off and put a new one on because it gets kind of loose. Uh, well, that's no fun, you know, to get a tight, tighter cast. You know, it's just getting bearable. And now she got another tight one on there. So uh, it's getting hot and things like that. So uh, not too comfortable. So pray for her that she's only got about 10 days left until uh, she gets it off. And then she'll have to have a brace for a week or so in new therapy. So I pray that the Lord would uh, give her healing and that she would be back to normal soon. I uh, pray for Beth also. She's, of course, still stuck in America and uh, can't get back. Uh, but I pray that uh, the Lord would use her while she's there and give her opportunities to serve Him there and to be encouraged to her family and things. And, uh, and that she'd be able to get back in, in the, his timing. Pray for the summer camp this summer. Um, the normal camp, uh, children's camp uh, dates, I think, are, had to be, um, couldn't, we couldn't have the normal children's uh, camp dates because the school messed up. <laughs> they changed the dates, and so they're not off the same dates that they are every year. Mm. And so I don't know what's going to happen there, but uh, we'll pray for the camp situation this summer. Uh, the ladies Bible study, English ladies Bible study will be on, the first one will be June 23rd. So Tuesday evening, June the 23rd. So there won't be one uh, the second week, but it will be on the 23rd. So June 23rd, if you can come in the evening here, uh, 7 o'clock in the evening here, uh, the ladies Bible study, English ladies Bible study. Of course, Japanese ladies Bible study will be uh, July the 5th, will be the first Japanese ladies Bible study. So if you can come to that, that'd be great too. So. Uh, keep those in mind. Uh, pray for Fan. She's not here today, but she'll be, um, she might come soon, but uh, she'll be uh, going to America at the end of the month and uh, getting engaged, hopefully, and then uh, going back to uh, Vietnam and waiting for her uh, spouse visa or fiance visa, whatever you call it, and then go back to America and get married. So pray for the Lord's will to be done in her life and at his timing and that she'll be patient. And, it would work everything according to his purpose and his Lord. Uh, so pray for her. All right, and then pray for one another. Uh, that the Lord would work in, in and through our lives to bring him glory. Okay. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and open up for prayer. Father, we thank you for your goodness to us. Thank you for the opportunity you've given us to be here today. Thank you for the opportunity you've given us to serve you. We aren't worthy of being called your servants. And we thank you that you've given us that privilege that we don't deserve. Your salvation, and your anything, but you give us that privilege, and we thank you for it. We pray to give, be us, help us be faithful with faithful hearts, and I pray that you would keep our eyes upon you and not uh, be distracted by the things of the world, the allurement of the world, and the pleasures of the life of this life, and the temporal pleasures of this life, the temporal material possessions, the fire of uh, the um, bless the eyes, bless the flesh of our life, and I pray that you keep us from those. Help us to continue be in your word so that we can have an eternal perspective, a biblical perspective, uh, and to see, see things as they really are, and to see the material things around us as fleeting, and that we don't uh, give in to the temptation to sin, and to disregard your holy word, and to gain uh, temporal benefits. We pray you help us each to keep that in mind as we go through this world, and help us to help others to see that also. It was a good week this week. He's just for your Lord. Jesus' name. Amen. All right, for the message number uh, 560. 560. Just over in glory land. 560. And we'll sing the first and the last of that also. Number 204.
song for today's message about heaven. Uh, if you remember, just uh, to review, we've been talking about uh, four, whoops, four roads to eternity. And uh, we said, number one, whoops, back there. Number one, uh, oh, I didn't touch it. <laughs> the saved, uh, the unsaved, there's two, two roads for them, and then two roads for the saved. Right. And we're talking about the unsaved uh, can get into eternity by dying in this life. And then number two, the unsaved can get into eternity by uh, going through the tribulation after Christ comes. Or the saved can get into eternity by dying in this life. Or by, when the rapture occurs, going up, being changed, and without dying, being changed, and uh, receiving our new resurrected bodies. Right? And we talked about the unsaved go to hell, and uh, the saved go to heaven. We'll talk about that today. Uh, then the time of the tribulation, the seven years uh, after the rapture occurs, there'll be seven years of what is called tribulation. And the last three and a half years are called the great tribulation. And uh, that's those will be things that will be happening on earth, the things that are mentioned in Revelation. Okay, uh, chapter 6 through chapter 11. And uh, then uh, number 4, we'll be talking about the saved that go into the rapture. When Christ comes, if Christ comes tomorrow, those who are alive will be caught together. Uh, the dead in Christ will rise first, the Bible says, and then we which will I remain, we'll be caught together from the Lord in the air. We'll be up there seven years from now. Okay, I'm not touching this thing. It's going by itself. Okay. Uh, now, last time we talked about hell, but there's a couple things that I wanted to mention. Um, some deviant views of hell. Uh, people who call themselves Christians who believe that, in different things that, that the Bible doesn't teach. Uh, first of all, uh, universalism teaches that everybody will go to heaven. Okay? That, that uh, eventually everybody will go to heaven. Uh, and uh, they, it teaches that there is no hell. Hell does not exist. So just heaven. But, you know, that's, that's interesting. We talked about last week the same passage that teaches about heaven teaches about hell. So... If, if heaven's not, if hell's not true, then heaven's not either. Okay, uh, and then there's the the uh, books. Okay. Annihilationism. Uh, annihilationism is the belief that those who are wicked will perish or be no more after the final judgment. Those unsaved human beings will be totally destroyed so that they do not exist rather than to suffer and to torture in hell. Mm-hmm. Um, I, that's not what the Bible teaches. Okay. And we looked at clearly last week when we talked about hell. The Bible teaches clearly about hell that there's a literal place. Uh, but, you know, some people don't want to think about hell. And so they come up with other doctrines to uh, make their mind at more ease. I don't know. But it's not true. The Bible is true. And then uh, spiritual punishment. Some people think, well, hell is not a literal place. It's just a, it's a punishment. And it's, it's a metaphor for being separated from God. No, hell is a punishment place of literal flames uh, and torture and torment. All right. Uh, today, was, you know, we talked about, uh, it's on, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, the appointed man wants to die, but after this, the judgment. So we are all appointed to die, and then our eternal state will start after we die, okay, after we're uh, finished with this life. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 7 says, uh, then shall the du- then shall the dust return to the earth as it as it was, and the spirit shall return to God who gave it. So uh, when we die, our bodies remain here, but our spirit goes somewhere. And we talked about last week the sinners. Uh, if you're not saved, the unsaved go to hell as soon as they die, and the saved go to heaven as soon as they die. Uh, so if you were to die tomorrow and Christ didn't come back. You're a believer. If you know Christ as your Savior, you will be going straight to heaven. Okay. And so we're going to talk today about whoops, about heaven. Um, this the saved to die go directly to heaven where Christ is. Uh, in Luke chapter 23, uh, Jesus said to him, "Verily there is in today thou shalt be with me in paradise." Uh, this is what the uh, Jesus said to the thief who was on the cross with him who believed in Christ, and he said, today, you're going to be with me in a paradise. And we'll see like, a little bit later, but, so, when we leave this life, we go straight to heaven, if we know Christ as our Savior. In Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1 says, 
For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in heaven. Okay, so uh, when our body dies, we go to heaven. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 8 says, We have confidence, I say, that, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. So to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Uh, if, we're, if we leave this body, we will be with the Lord in heaven. Okay, Philippians chapter 1, verse 21 and 23 Paul says, For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. But if I live in this flesh, uh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall choose I wot not. For I am in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. So Paul said, you know, if I depart from this life, I'll be with Christ in heaven. And I didn't fear death. In fact, if he talks about it, it would be better, he said. Okay? It is better. You know, what's better, heaven or this sinful earth? Of course, heaven is much better. Uh, but Paul, he went on, by the way, after these verses, he said, but it's, it's more needful you, for you that I stay here for right now. So I'll be here for a little bit, but I'm looking forward to going to heaven. So we should, as Christians, we should not fear death. We should look forward you know, to heaven. John chapter 12, verse 26 says, If any man uh, serve me, uh, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall my servants be. If any man serve me, then will my father, then him will my father honor. Okay, so Jesus said, if you if you follow me, you'll be where I am. So we'll, we'll be in heaven with, with Jesus. Um, Jesus also said in John chapter 14, uh, if I and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you into myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Okay, so Jesus is in heaven, and he will take us to be with him in heaven when we die. Uh, John chapter 17, verse 24 says, Jesus is praying and says, this is Jesus' prayer for us. It says, Father, I will that they, they also, who thou hast given me, be with me where I am, and that they may behold my glory, which uh, thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. So Jesus prayed that we would be with him. We from him. So Acts chapter 7, verse 59, uh, finally, Stephen, when he was stoned, it says, and they stoned Stephen, and calling upon God, saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. So Stephen knew where he was going. He was going to heaven when he died. And so he was anticipating seeing Jesus and seeing God. All right, uh, the, we talked about, when we talked about hell, we talked about the, the names, the, the, the Greek and the Hebrew. Uh, there's only one, really, in Hebrew and one in Greek also. Uh, so the Greek mean, uh, the Hebrew means the same from the Greek. They both mean the same. Uh, either heaven or air. Okay? Uh, air or heaven is the same Greek word. Uh, for example, uh, there's a verse in Daniel. Daniel chapter 2, verse 37 and 38. Use this word, this exact same word, in two different ways. For example, verse 37 says, uh, Thou, O king, art... A king of kings, and for the God of heaven, so the God of heaven, so about the God of the true God, the God of heaven, uh, hath given thee a kingdom, power, and strength, and glory. And whosoever the children of men, and wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field, and the fowls of the, of the air, or of heaven, hath he given into thy hand, that made thee ruler over them all. Thou art the head of all. Okay? So Daniel was talking to the king, and he said, this is, you know, the God of heaven hath given you this kingdom. And then he talks about uh, the beasts of the field and the fowls of heaven. <laughs> okay, so those are two different, same word, same Greek word, same Hebrew word. Uh, but one means heaven where God is, where we go when we die, and one means the air, okay, and the birds, where the birds fly. Same thing with Greek. The Greek is the same as heaven or air or the sky. There's actually three places called heaven in the Bible. Okay, when you see the word heaven in the Bible, or heaven or heavens, um, there are three different meanings that it is possible for that word to have. Uh, and they're very clear. I mean, there's no mistaking. You, you won't mistake one for the other when you read them because they're very clear. Uh, and there's three of them. There's the atmospheric heaven. That is the heaven above us, the sky where the birds fly and the clouds are. That's the, uh, where the air is. That's the atmospheric heaven, and there's the planetary heaven, 
where the stars and the planets are. That's a planetary heaven. And then there's the third, and Paul calls the third heaven. Okay? Well, the atmospheric heaven, uh, the Bible talks much about that. Um, uses that word for the air, or the, the atmospheric heaven. For example, in Genesis chapter 7, verse 11 and 12, uh, in the 600th year of Noah, Noah's life, in the second month, in the seventh day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up, and the windows of heaven were open, and the rain was upon the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. So where the rain came from was called heaven, okay? The sky, that's where the clouds were, that's where the rain came from. So that's what was called heaven. Okay? In Psalm chapter 147, verse 8, who covereth the heavens with clouds, and prepareth the rain for the earth, and maketh the grass grow on the mountain. So where the clouds are is called heaven. Okay? That's the atmospheric heaven. Uh, Acts chapter 14, verse 7, nevertheless he hath left himself without, not, he ne never, nevertheless he left not himself without witness, in that he uh, did good and gave us rain from heaven, and fruit and, and uh, fruit and fruitful season, filling our hearts with food and blood. All right. So the, where the rain is is heaven. And then there's a the planetary heaven. The Bible talks about the planetary heaven. For example, uh, Genesis chapter one, verse fourteen to seventeen. And God said, "Let there be uh, lights in the firmament of heaven." Divide the day from night, and let them be for signs, for seasons, for days, for years, and let them be for lights on the firmament of the heavens to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night. And made stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven and gave to give light upon the earth. So were the stars and the moon and the sun, that, that's heaven, that's the planetary heaven. Okay? And the Bible uses that for heaven also. Uh, Psalm 119, of course, the famous, uh, you probably quote it, says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament sheweth his handiwork. Day and day they have a speech, and night and night sheweth knowledge, and there's, there's no language, uh, no speech, I'm sorry, there's no speech or language where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone out through all the earth, uh, their words to the end of the world. In them he hath set a tabernacle for the sun. In other words, where this planetary heaven, the heavens to declare the word of God, is where the sun is. Okay? So that's called, that's, that's talking about planetary heavens. And then finally in Matthew chapter 24, verse 29 says, Immediately after the tribulation days, there sh uh, shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the power of the heavens shall be shaken. Okay? So there's going to be some catastrophe up in the skies, in heaven where the stars and things are. Okay? So there's the uh, atmospheric heaven, and then there's the planetary heaven, and then there's what Paul calls the third heaven, uh, uh, where we die when we when we go when we go when we die. All right, Second Corinthians chapter twelve, verse two through four. Paul said, "I knew a man in Christ about four, about fourteen years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell. God knows. Such an one is caught up to the third heaven. So the first heaven is the atmospheric heaven." Second heaven is the planetary heaven, and the third heaven is where uh, God dwells, where we go when we die. So, uh, I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, cannot tell. God knows how that he was caught up into paradise mm -hmm. and heard unspeakable things which are not lawful for men to utter. So, Paul went to heaven where God is, okay? And where we go when we die, that's where he went when he died here. Uh, but God sent him back. Uh, there are very, uh, Paul is. Uh, by his testimony, uh, he went to heaven. Nobody else went to heaven. And if they did, you know, there's people that have gone, supposedly gone to heaven, and written a book about how, what heaven's like, you know? And there's lots of you can, there's lots of them. You can go and look and, I went to heaven, and this is what heaven's like. Well, they, un, unfortunately, they all contradict each other, first of all, you know? One guy says it's like this, and the other guy says it's like this. And both of them contradict the Bible. <laughs> it's not like the Bible says. You can't go to heaven. And Paul really actually did go to heaven. But he said he couldn't tell about it, you know. Uh, probably what it means is, you know, he could. There's no words that he could use to describe what happened. You can't even imagine what it's like, you know. Uh, for example, what if you saw a new color? Okay, how are you gonna describe it? You know, well, it's not red. It's not purple. It's not green. It's, you know, how do you describe something nobody's ever seen? Okay? 
you can't describe something nobody's ever seen or can relate to. So nothing he could have said uh, could have helped us to understand. You know, you look at what heaven is like. Sometimes the, the descriptions in Revelation or other prophecies in the Old Testament, and uh, it's some kind of mysterious thing that we don't understand. We probably couldn't understand it. You know, we'll get the experience one day, but heaven is not something that he, we can talk about. So if somebody says, I went to heaven, and this is what it's like, that it's not. First of all, they didn't go to heaven. Second of all, if they did go to heaven, they couldn't write about it. <laughs> they couldn't tell about it. So it's not true. None of those books are true. Okay? Don't be fooled by them. Okay? All right, and then um, in 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 27 says, uh, that will God indeed dwell on earth? Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain thee, much less the house that I built. Okay? So, uh, when the temple was built, the dedication, you know, they realized God God can't be limited to a place. You know, heaven, the atmospheric heaven, the, uh, the planetary heaven, and also the spiritual heaven, the heaven where we go when we die, cannot contain God. God is everywhere, and he is everywhere, even where there is not a place. Okay? Uh, if there's a limit to the earth, if the universe is has a, a limit, when you come to the edge limit, and who knows what's on the other side, if there is something, God's over there. Whatever else, is, there might be nothing over there, but God's over there, okay? Because God was here before time and space and matter were in existence. So God is there. God is everywhere, okay? So heaven can't contain God. The atmospheric heaven sure can't contain God, and the planetary heaven is huge. You know, we say it easily, you all know, planetary heaven, you know, we're all those galaxies. Do you realize how big, I mean, it's huge. You know, light is the fastest thing we know of, and the light travels very, very fast. You know, I don't remember how exactly fast, but really fast, okay? Um, the light from the sun takes, what, eight minutes to get to Earth, so it travels, you know, that's, uh, what, 90 million miles, I don't know, something like that. But anyway, it's super fast, okay? And so when we, we travel, you, this, the measurement of light is called light year, okay? And that's the, the, the time at light speed the distance you can go at light speed in one year, the speed of light, okay? So that's, I mean, in one year, light can go very, very far. You know, the speed of light, you know? You know how fast, like, if, if this light travels for one year, it's going to be millions of miles away, okay? Mm -hmm. Well, our galaxy is 100,000 light years. We take light, if light started at one end, and at the speed of light traveled across the galaxy, our galaxy, just our galaxy, it would take 100,000 years for it to get to the other side. That's huge. But ours is just a small galaxy in the million of billions and billions of galaxies out there. Okay? And there's lots of distance between the galaxies. There's more distance between the galaxies than the galaxies are wide. Okay? So you're talking about, you know, lots and lots of light, very, very far. Okay? But however far it is, cannot contain God. That is greater than that. Mm -hmm. Billions and billions of light years of, uh, apart in that way and that way. But God still can't be contained in that. Okay? God is bigger than that. So, but the point is, <laughs> I got off on that thing, but the point is, uh, there's more than one heaven. It says the heaven and the heaven of heavens. <laughs> okay, so the Bible talks of acknowledges more than one heaven. The, the planetary heaven, the uh, atmospheric heaven, planetary heaven, third heaven. All right, uh, Psalm chapter... Uh, 103 verse 19 says, The Lord hath prepared a throne in the heavens, and his kingdom, mm -hmm. and his kingdom rules over all. So, uh, where God dwells, where his throne is, where we will be when we die, that's this heaven he's talking about, the third heaven. Uh, and Psalm 9, uh, four, I'm sorry, Revelation chapter 4 verse 2 says, Immediately there was, was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven. And one sat on the throne. So that's called this, this third heaven that I talk about. Uh, he, there's other words for heaven. Remember, there's other words for hell. Um, and there's other words the Bible uses for heaven. Uh, the room is paradise with all this already. Uh, but, you know, Jesus, when he was on the cross, the thief believed, he says, Today thou shalt be with me in heaven, in paradise. Okay? So heaven is called paradise. And also in Luke, we looked at this last week, the rich man and Lazarus. Uh, and, uh, sorry, oops. Uh, talks about heaven, uh, 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 paradise, and then Second Corinthians chapter twelve verse four, um, how that he was caught up to paradise. We just read this, but this is Paul's testimony of 
when you enter the third heaven. They call it the third heaven, they call it paradise. You've heard of unspeakable words, it's not awful, and that. And then uh, it's called Abraham's bosom. The story of Rich Man and Lazarus is called Paradise and Abraham's bosom. Mm-hmm. Um, Luke chapter 16. Uh, he passed, the beggar died, and was carried by angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And he held after his eyes being tormented and seeth Abraham far, far off and Lazarus, Lazarus in his bosom. So Abraham's bosom. Heaven is called Abraham's bosom, a place of comfort. Okay? Uh, it was also called the world to come in Mark chapter 10, verse 30. Uh, that he shall, rec- he shall receive an hundred fold now in this time, houses and brethren and sisters and mother and children and man with persecutions. And in the world to come, eternal life. So it's called the world to come. Right? It's called eternal glory. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 10 says, Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Jesus Christ with eternal glory. First Peter chapter 5, same thing. It is the God of all grace that called us into his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After you have suffered a while, make you perfect, strength, establish, strengthen you, etc. Okay. Called in, eternal inheritance in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 15. Now, for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament uh, that by means of death, the redemption of the trans- trespasses that were under the first testament, um, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Okay. It's also called rest. Uh, Hebrews chapter 4 says, uh, For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said. Okay. Alright, so rest. And it's also called the joy of the Lord. Matthew chapter 25, verse 21 says, And the Lord said to him, well done, thou good and faithful servant, thou hast been faithful over a few things, I will make thee rule over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Okay. Also called the presence of the Lord. Thessalonians chapter, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 9. We shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. So this is in a negative sense, this is saying some people won't be going to heaven. And those are people who won't be going to the presence of the Lord. Also called the king, uh, heavenly kingdom. Uh, first, second Timothy chapter four, verse eighteen. And, and the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, and will preserve me into His heavenly kingdom. To whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. And it's called my Father's house. And we looked at this verse already, but um, in John chapter fourteen, we look at this passage. Uh, in my Father's house are many mansions. Were well, not so I told you. I prepared a place for you. So, Father's house. Jesus called. Heaven is Father's house. Okay. Um, heaven is as real as hell. Last week we said that hell is as real as, real as heaven. And there are some people who believe there's a heaven, but there's not a hell. Okay. Uh, well, heaven is as real as hell. Hell is as real as heaven, and heaven is as real as hell. Okay. Uh, we, we say this passage a lot. Uh, in Luke, it talks about uh, the rich man going to hell and Lazarus going to heaven. Um, Heaven is a place of intimacy and familiarity. In Luke chapter 16, uh, it's called Abraham's bosom, okay? uh, denoting a place of comfort. Uh, Abraham's bosom is Abraham's breast where you, know, you take a child and you hold a child who's scared or you know, has some traumatic experience and you hold it close and it's a comfort. And that's what heaven is. It's a place of comfort for us. Uh, a place of comfort. Uh, it's said to be a place of comfort. Uh, Abraham said, uh, Son, remember, this is talking to the rich man, Son, remember, when thou, thou my life shall receive thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now is he comforted, and thou art tormented. So hell is a place of torment, and heaven is a place of comfort. Uh, a place from, uh, that we get encouragement and consolation uh, from our hard life. Okay? It's a place of joy. In Luke chapter 15, verse 7 says, And I say unto you, that likewise joy shall be in heaven for one sinner that repenteth more than the ninety-nine just persons which need no repentance. So there's joy in heaven, a place of joy. It's a place of peace. Uh, Luke chapter 19, verse 38 says, saying, Blessed is the king that cometh in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven, and glory in the highest. It's a place of hope. In the last week we said hell is one of the torments of hell is that there is no hope. 
no hope in, in hell about escaping. It's, it's a, it's a, you're in despondency in hell because there's no hope of getting out. But heaven is a place of hope. Uh, Colossians chapter 1, verse 5 says, For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, where have you heard before, in the word of the truth of the gospel. Right? It's a place of hope. Uh, heaven is heaven because, number one, God will be there. I mean, it's a wonderful place. Uh, but the best thing about heaven is God is there. It's a place where God is. Uh, many, many passages that teach this. Uh, Let your light so shine through before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So God is in heaven. Uh, God is everywhere, of course. God is omnipresent. There's nowhere that God is not. God said his throne is in heaven. Okay? So there's this, a place that God calls uh, his throne in heaven. Okay? Uh, in Jesus' prayer that he taught the disciples. Uh, it says, After this man I pray ye therefore, Our Father which art in heaven, will be thy name. For God is in heaven. Colossians chapter 4, verse 1 says, Master, give unto your servants that which is just and equal, knowing that ye also have a master in heaven. For God is your master, and he is in heaven. Okay? So God is there. Heaven is heaven because God is there. Uh, sec man, this, this is the second thing. Jesus is there. Only God is there, Jesus is there. Uh, in Luke chapter 23, verse 43, And Jesus said to them, Unto him, very, very, I say unto thee, uh, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. So Jesus said, You're going to be with me in paradise. So Jesus is going to be in paradise that day. Okay? All right? And then in Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 10, uh, And to wait for the Son from heaven. We raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. So Jesus is in heaven. The Son is in heaven. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven. With a shout, with the voice of the archangel, the trump of God, the dead in Christ shall rise first. And then Second Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 7 says, uh, And to you uh, who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. So Jesus is in heaven. He comes to come from heaven. Okay? So, God is in heaven. Jesus is in heaven. The angels will be in heaven. Okay? Um, I've never seen an angel, but I'm sure there's something to behold. <laughs> okay? uh, the angel of heaven. Matthew chapter 8, verse 10, says, 18, verse 10 says, uh, Take heed that ye uh, despise not one of these little ones, for I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father. Which is in heaven. Okay. As long as God in heaven, angels are in heaven. Matthew 20, verse 30 says, 22, verse 30 says, uh, for in the resurrection uh, they neither marry nor are given marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. So there are angels of God in heaven. Mark chapter 13, verse 32 says, Uh, but of that day and of that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven in the Son of the Father. So the angels are in heaven. Uh, and then I mean Luke chapter 22, verse 43 says, And there appeared unto uh, an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. Okay? So the angels from heaven. So angels will be there. So God will be there. Jesus will be there. Angels will be there. And the saints from all time and places. All kinds of places, all the saints will be there. We'll be together with those who are like-minded, who have trusted Christ as their Savior, who are there together with us and rejoicing together in the presence of God. Um, Colossians chapter 1, verse 12 says, uh, Giving thanks unto God, uh, unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. The saints in heaven. Okay? And then Revelation chapter 5, verse 9 says, And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seal thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by the blood of out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. So in heaven there are going to be people, saints, from all over the world, from every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Okay? They're all going to be in heaven. So the saints are going to be there. So God's going to be there, Jesus is going to be there, angels are going to be there, the saints are going to be there. And then our reward is there. Uh, the Bible says our reward is in heaven. Matthew chapter 5, verse 12 says, Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. 
Well, so the first few the prophets which were before you. So our reward is in heaven. We have a reward in heaven. Luke chapter 6, verse 23 says, Rejoice ye in that day, and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is in heaven. For in like manner did their, did their fathers and prophets. So our reward is in heaven. And then the Bible says, uh, well, we'll stop there this morning, but the Bible says, Our treasure is in heaven. We'll, we'll finish up here. So we won't get too far off from the morning Japanese service. But, uh, <laughs> our treasure is in heaven. Okay, God teaches us our treasure is in heaven. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 20, it says, But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through and steal. So we can lay up treasures in heaven. You know, our treasure is in heaven. Now, does that mean, you know, we can take some material possessions with us? No. <laughs> It's not the treasure it's talking about. If that's the treasure you're pursuing, you're pursuing the wrong treasures. You're being, you're being lured by the treasures of the temporal world, and you're giving up the treasures of heaven that you have up in heaven. And Matthew chapter, Matthew chapter 19, verse 21 says, Jesus said unto them, uh, him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell all that, sell that thou hast, and give the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven come upon thee. You want treasure in heaven. And if you do what God wants you to do, you'll be rewarded. You have treasures in heaven. Uh, uh, storing up what is eternally profitable for you, not what is just temporally profitable for you. And treasures upon earth are temporal things that may profit us temporally, but they're temporal. We can, by what we do here on earth, we can store up our, for ourselves treasures in heaven that will not fade away. Uh, Mark chapter 10, verse 21. And then Jesus, beholding him, loved him and said to him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell what thou hast, and give it for, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and take out the cross on me. Uh, unfortunately, this man had a lot of earthly treasures, okay? and he didn't want to give up those earthly treasures. Even though he would, Jesus said, If you give up those earthly treasures and you follow me, then you will have treasures in heaven. He didn't want to let go of those earthly treasures. He's already let go of them a long time ago. He only had them for a few more years after Jesus talked to him about this. Uh, and who knows what happened to them. Maybe, you know, uh, Ecclesiastes talks about, you know, passing our riches on to somebody who will, you know, waste it. We'll work hard and get all these treasures and then they pass it on to somebody who's going to waste it, you know. Um, and so, there's nothing worth uh, anything on this earth. Now, it's not worth giving up the treasures in heaven for the treasures on earth. We can have treasures in heaven. And then Luke chapter 20, uh, 18, verse 22 says, uh, Now when Jesus heard these things, he said to him, Yet one thing thou lackest, uh, sell all that hath and distribute the poor, and thou have treasure in heaven. Come follow me. So it's the same, same thing in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, same story. Uh, the man had treasures that, on earth that he didn't want to give up. He wasn't willing to let go of them, even to gain treasures in heaven. And unfortunately, he went away, and less later he turned to Christ. Uh, he is in hell regretting his decision to hold on to that earthly treasure for just a little bit longer and lose his heavenly treasure. Um, that's what the rich man did. He, had, he was rich on this earth. He had a lot of temporal riches. He didn't want to give up those temporal riches to receive re re eternal riches. And Razus had no temporal riches. He had nothing. He had no food, no, no health, nothing. No friends, nothing. Uh, but he got his eternal treasures in heaven. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 34 says, For ye had compassion on me in my bonds, and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in, your, knowing in yourselves that ye have a heaven, in heaven a better and enduring substance. Okay? So, uh, whoever the author of Hebrews, I won't say Paul, but <laughs> whoever the author of Hebrews was, <clears throat> said that um, you took joyfully the spoiling of your goods. You gave of what your material possessions because um, you have in heaven an enduring substance, a treasure that lasts forever. This don't, won't, won't go, go away. Won't, you can't lose it. Uh, you can't, uh, it won't go to devalue. It's uh, something enduring in heaven, treasure in heaven. And then finally, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 4 says, uh, to uh, an inheritance, uh, in, inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Okay? So you can have treasures in heaven. So, heaven is wonderful. God is there. 
Jesus is there, the angels are there, the other saints are there, and our reward is there, and treasures are there. Heaven is a wonderful, marvelous place. Okay? So we'll stop right there this time, but there's a lot more we can say about heaven. It teaches much about heaven, but heaven is a wonderful place beyond our imagination. Okay? And so we must make sure that we're on our way to heaven. Do you know? Does the Bible tell you that you can know that you can go to heaven? Yes. Um, in in First John chapter five verse thirteen, Jesus said, um, John said, um, these things that are written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. And we believe on the name of the Son of God, so we can know that we have eternal life. We can know we can be assured that we're on our way to heaven. Not because of anything we do. If if you have if you are depending upon your works for salvation, you will have uh, fear. Because you always say, did I do enough? Did I do enough? I don't think I did enough. Oh, I failed there. I sinned. Oh, no, now I'm not going to heaven. Oh, no, oh, no. You'd be worried all your life. Now, there's nothing you can do to get to heaven. Okay? So you can't have assurance of heaven by your works. Okay? But you can have assurance in heaven if you believe God. God has promised it. God, who cannot lie, has promised us eternal life. Uh, if we believe in the name of the Son of God. We can know that we have eternal life and we can be assured that we will be in heaven. How about you? Do you have that assurance today? Are you looking forward? Uh, you know, none of us probably are looking forward to the experience of death. You know? Many times death is associated with pain. As we get older, our bodies stop, stop working and uh, sometimes there's pain associated with that. But uh, So sometimes we don't look forward to the process. And so I can understand when people you know, our trepida have trepidation about facing uh, the pain of death. But death is simply a way to get out of this weak, sinful, corrupt body into a perfect environment, heaven, a wonderful place. And so we shouldn't fear death. We should be assured. Now, you don't have the assurance of your salvation. If you're not sure, uh, maybe it's because you're depending upon your works. If you're depending on your works, yeah, you're going to be here. I, mean, I, I was talked to a Catholic lady one time. I was on door to evangelism at a church we used to go to when I was in college. I knocked on the stage door and I said, uh, Excuse me, ma'am, you know, if you die tonight, where are you going to go? And she said, Well, oh, you can't know that. You know? I said, oh, Really? And she said, I said, Do you have a Bible? She said, Yeah, I'm a Catholic, so I have a Bible. I said, Oh, and so I knew this, this verse was in that for Catholic Bible, too. So I said, Yeah, can I see it? Can you bring it? I had my Bible. I didn't want to show her my Bible. I wanted, to see it. I wanted her to see it from her Bible. And I knew that verse was in her Bible, too. So she. It took her a little bit, a little while to find her Bible. So <laughs> she brought it and I said, this passage. And then sure enough, it said right there, you know, these things that I already knew that believe in the name of the Son of God, they may know they have eternal life. And they believe in the name of the Son of God. She goes, whoa. She said, you can't know that. You know, that's presumptuous. And I was like, no. If, you, if you're trying to get there by your works, yeah, you'll never be sure enough. You will never be sure. And you should be sure. You know, what are you going to do? What works can you do that are worth heaven? Nothing. There's no works you can do that are worthy of heaven. So if you're if you're trying to get there by your works, you're not gonna get there, and you're not gonna have peace. You're not gonna have peace in the way. You're always gonna, you know. Uh, I've heard Catholics say, you know, I think so. I'm hoping. I'm trying. You know, I'm trying. Okay. Like, Man, that's an assurance, huh? You gotta talk to Catholic priest. Go talk to him. You know, if you die, you go to heaven. He don't know. He don't know. He has no assurance. Well, I hope. You know, I'm just crossing my fingers. You know, that kind of thing. You know, I was like, wow, what a thing to to take a, a chance on. You know. God has promised, yes. and if God cannot lie, has promised us eternal life in heaven and forever, then we rely on God's promise. Amen. We trust God. We say, God, you said it, I believe it, and that settles it. Uh, and uh, if God's wrong, then I'm wrong. If God's not wrong, if God can't lie, God's perfect. He's Amen. omniscient. He knows everything. There's nothing he doesn't know. Nothing. And so when God, who knows everything, promises me something, I can rely on that promise. I don't know everything. I can't do everything. I, there's a lot of things I don't know. So if I have assurance in my own knowledge, I won't have assurance. If I have assurance in my own work, I won't have assurance. But I can only have that. The only way I can have assurance is believing God. I'm trusting God. I'm putting my faith and trust in God and His Word. And that gives us peace. It's settled. It's not relying upon me. It's relying upon God. And God promising God doesn't lie. And God knows everything. I don't know everything, but He does. And the one who knows everything told me and so that, that is assuring, more assuring than anything we can even do. You know, some people might have 
assurance because of their works. But that's just because they think their work's good when it's not. <laughs> they don't know how bad they are. Um, they're mistaken, but they think they're doing good enough to go to heaven, but they don't even realize that they're not doing good enough to go to heaven. But they think they do, so they're falsely assured of heaven. But we can be not falsely assured, we can be truly assured of heaven. If we trust Christ as Savior. But I hope you have trusted Christ as your Savior. And if you trust Christ as your Savior, uh, the only hope that you can offer anybody else is not your words of wisdom. <laughs> okay? But just keep on keeping on, brother. <laughs> do the best you can. You know, don't worry about it. You know, no, there's nothing you can do. You're going to say, hey, you're, hey, if you're dependent on you, you're not going there. Okay? But God has promised to forgive us because Jesus died for us. He loved us so much. He sent Jesus to die in our place. And if we'll trust him as our Savior, he'll give us eternal life for free. We don't have to do anything for it. And we can have assurance. Not because of we think we did enough, but assurance because we know we didn't do enough, but he did enough. Christ did enough. We don't do enough. We can't do enough. But Christ did and he can. And so we can trust him. So let's let's trust Christ and then let's help others to do that. The only assurance that they're going to have, only peace that we can give them is to, to point them to the word of God and the promises of God and encourage them to believe God and his promises. So let's close with prayer. Father, we thank you for your goodness to us. We thank you for your word that teaches us these things and we pray that you would help us to trust you, to believe what your word says and to live life in assurance of the truth of your word. And I pray that you would give us strength, give us comfort and encouragement, and then help us to help others to have that same uh, comfort and encouragement that only you provide. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, let's close by singing number 571. Number 571, we're singing the first and the last stanzas of that also. When we all get to heaven. Mm -hmm.